What's up, YouTube? My name is Clay Cook, and I'm an editorial and portrait photographer based in Louisville, Kentucky. It's been a while, guys. The last time I did a video on color grading was actually April 7th of 2014. That was five years ago, and five years is a lot of time as a photographer. And I've learned a lot, and I kind of want to show you an updated process on how to color grade like a pro. As you may have seen in my previous YouTube tutorial, or maybe even my f-stoppers tutorial, I've always color graded in Photoshop. But over the last couple of years, I've really needed to simplify that workflow. So now my color grading process has moved fully into Capture One. Why? It can do anything that Photoshop can do on the color side, and in some cases, it's even more intelligent. So in this two-part tutorial, I'm going to show you how I've color graded both a image that leans on the cool side of things, such as a studio portrait uh, in this image on the left, and then on the right, I'm going to show you how I color toned this image that leans on the very warm side. It's a fashion image that I shot on location here in Kentucky. So let's get started. I'm going to dive right in. With this image on the left, this is a portrait of Richard Gallagher, and Richard plays a character in the Broadway musical Angels in America. So this is the edit that I received back from my retoucher, Jordan Hartley. You're going to notice today that we're not actually working with raw images. I'm working with TIFF files. And the reason why I decided to do that is because that's how I color grade images. Because most of my work being in the portrait and editorial field is always retouched in some way. So I generally work with TIFF files. I've tried color grading beforehand and I've tried so many different techniques in the past. And I've always found that I prefer to finish an image um, with a color tone rather than um, doing that right out of the gate and then going through that retouching process. The first thing you really need to analyze is where do you want to lean with the image? What do you want it to feel like? And in this case, this is a very moody kind of vibey portrait. And I want to lean more on the cool side, but really retaining sort of the warmth of the expression and uh, the warmth of the Richard's personality in this case. So uh, let's get started. The first thing we want to do is work on the exposure side of this. The first thing I notice is we have some really deep, dark shadows here underneath his feet. And we'll probably have to handle that with a gradient tool on another layer. But uh, we're going to walk through this uh, exposure tool first. I think the exposure is nice. Um, we're going to start with some contrast. So I'm going to boost that contrast up five points. Brightness looks okay. So I think we need to desaturate this image. So we're going to drag this down pretty significantly. It's going to feel really desaturated, but remember, we're going to put some color back into this a little bit. With HDR, um, I like getting it right in camera, so I don't want to have to depend on HDR, but it's a really powerful tool in Capture One. So the first thing we're going to do is boost these shadows up um, a little bit to where this image is balanced. I think the highlights are okay, but we'll pull it back a little bit on his forehead there, about 20 points. Next, we move down to clarity, and this is where Capture One really excels. I love the punchiness that clarity provides in Capture One, so we're going to really use this tool and, and, and punch this out. So we're going to raise that about 15. We're going to bring up structure, which is sort of another way of sharpening. I'm sure there's a way more technical term, but I'm not really a technical guy, so to me, that's what it looks like. Once we've added your basic exposure, HDR, and clarity to the image, we're going to move down to the curve tool and the color contrast. I like how it's balanced, but I think we need to add a little bit more of that mood and that drama back in. So I'm going to pull this Luma line down just a bit, just to add in a little bit more of that lighting dimension. We're going to move on to the red channel. And what I'm going to do is basically pull out all the reds. Um, just bring that down a hair on the shadows. We're going to bring out the, the reds and the highlights. About right there. Next, we're going to move on to the green channel. Um, 
mostly going to pull the greens out of the shadows and retain that red and that warmth in the highlights. Maybe add a little bit of green into his skin tone. Awesome. Next, we're moving on to the blue. And we're going to do a pretty subtle S-curve on this particular channel. About right there. There you go. That feels pretty nice so far. Okay, once we've got uh, our basic exposure and our color contrast, we're gonna click over to the color tab and move into white balance. One thing to keep in mind when working with white balance is that this is a TIFF file. This is a retouched TIFF file. A TIFF file just doesn't have the data that a raw file does. So when you're working with white balance, it can go wrong really quick. So a TIFF file just can't handle significant white balance changes. So you have to really do this subtly. So I'm gonna just pull this up to add a little bit more warmth than this. And then pull back the tint. Just about right around there. And I do that and you're gonna see that I'm kind of leaning on the green side of here but I'm gonna be adding a lot of these blues in color balance. And, um, and this is really where I think Capture One shines is in color balance. It's, in my opinion, far superior than Photoshop. So the first thing we're gonna do is add a little bit of warmth into the midtones here. About right there. Next, we're going to really pull uh, blues into these shadows pretty significantly. And then moving on to the highlights. Now we're going to add some blue and some cools into the highlights here. Awesome. So that's looking really good. It's re looking really cool. Um, I think I might make a quick change onto the curves here, go to the blue and add a little bit more warmth or green to the overall image. Just slightly, about right there. Great. Now, once we have our color toned and our color locked in, what we're gonna do is move on to keystoning and cropping and sharpening and grain. Um, so a quick tip when working with keystone is that by extending the frame vertically and stretching, literally stretching the pixels, you can really lengthen the subject and make them look taller in a lot of cases. So I like doing this for more of my fashion work or uh, some of the lifestyle work that I do, just to really give them length. Moving on to uh, sharpening. So there's a lot of ways that people sharpen. I used to do a pretty complicated process, but I've since just decided to simplify my workflow and add a quick little tinge of sharpening in Capture One, and I think it's all the same. So I go up here and I add about 275 to the sharpening. I'm gonna go down to grain and really pump up this grain because I love grain in my images. Awesome. Once I apply the sharpening, my final step to the process is cropping. So I really like the five by seven or a four by five crop. And so that's what I'm gonna do here. Um, I don't mind cropping his feet out or the concrete. I kinda of wanna pull this in nice and tight. And then the final process of what I wanna do is sort of add a um, gradient to the bottom side of this image like I mentioned earlier. Um, we're gonna add a linear gradient mask to raise those shadows a bit and so it doesn't fall off so quickly. I'm just gonna probably bring this up about a stop, stop and a half, something to that effect. 
And from here, what I like to do is basically sit on this image. Um, I like to sit on this image for probably 24 hours, um, come back to it later. And in a lot of cases, you're going to be like, whoa, that's way too green or whoa, that's way too red or that's way too warm or way too cool. So in this case, let's say I rest my eyes for 24 hours. I come back. I think it honestly, it's looking a little too green for me overall. So what I'm going to do is just go into the green channel here and pull out some of these greens. And already, I think that's way better and more in line with um, what I originally did with this image. Next, we're going to move on to this image, which I created for a fall fashion editorial here in Louisville, Kentucky. We shot this in a very super hot barn, so I wanted to lean very warm with all of these images and the color grade. This is the image I received back from my retoucher, Jordan Hartley. And this is basically our basic tiff that, that we're going to color and finish today. So I'm going to start over here in the exposure tool, the HDR tool, clarity tool, and curve tool. And let's get to work. I think it's a little bright, so I'm just going to bring this down a little bit, one point of a stop. We're going to add some contrast, of course. And then like the other image, we're going to significantly desaturate this image. Moving down to HDR, I think it really looks good. I like the bright highlights on the hair and um, the coming through the barn, but I'm going to bring up these shadows just a bit. Now with clarity, you could go pretty extreme with this. Um, but again, Capture One does it very wisely. It's very intelligent. So I'm going to pump this clarity to 20 and I'm going to add about 10 points on the structure really to add that punchiness to the image. Moving down to the color curves, I'm going to start with luminosity. Now with this image, I really want it to feel rustic. Um, so I'm going to bring this luminosity up pretty significantly on the shadows. This isn't obviously how it'll look at all, but we're going to really work with this. Next, moving on to the red. I think there's plenty of reds on it. I'm not going to touch the reds for now. We might come back to that, but we'll leave it as is. Moving to the greens, we're going to pull some of these greens out. We'll start there. Next, we move down to the blue. We're going to zap all these blues out, really start making this pretty significantly uh, warm here. There we go. All right. So I think we've got a nice balanced shot moving towards a really warm image. Next, we're going to move over to the color balance and the white balance. I'm not going to touch the white balance. I might change this tint a hair. Um, let's see. I think it's pretty good. I don't think we really need to touch white balance. I think we can solve this with color balance. So with the color balance, um, we're going to really bring out this warmth even more pretty significantly. Move that about there. We'll add warmth in the shadows about right there. Then we're going to go even more red into the highlights. Somewhere around there. Awesome. That's starting to feel pretty good. So the only thing that I've noticed in this is that because we pump so much green and warmth into the highlights, a lot of these whites, for example, in the barn have gone a little bit too far beyond what I really want them to look like. So we're going to move down here to the color editor and I'm going to take this color picker and just select one of these panels on the barn here. And what I want to do is sort of desaturate this just a bit so it balances those out a little bit more. Next we're going to go to the keystone tool and we're going to flex this image a little bit vertically just to add some height to the model Shannon here. Just about one point. 
Then we're going to go over to details. We're going to add some sharpening. I'm going to go about 250 on this. We're going to really add some grain. So I'm going to push this on silver rich grain. So it's a really nice rich grain that's black and white. Next thing I would move on to is the crop tool and try to crop this and bring this in a hair. But I did shoot this with a phase one IQ three and I really love the uh, aspect ratio of a medium format. So I don't think I'm going to crop this image. So I think we're about there. The only thing I would probably do from here is maybe bring down these uh, this luminosity a little bit more, just to add a little bit more density into those shadows. And I think we've got a great image. It has taken me years and years to develop AI and an intuition for color grading. So don't get too hard on yourself if you don't get it right the first time. And this may not work for you. It may not work on your style of lighting. It may not work on your style of photography. So please keep that in mind when you're applying this technique. Another thing is that it's subjective. You can go any direction you want with your color grade. You can go really heavy handed or you can simply color correct. It's however you want to go about handling your style of imagery. Thanks for tuning in, guys. This is part two, five years later, of Color Grade Like a Pro. If you have any questions or just a comment, feel free to comment in the comment section below, or you can shoot me an email, clay at claycookphoto.com. Cheers.